Hello and welcome back to the channel this week. This week's video is a little bit different. We're going to talk about composing, focusing, and exposing, and we're going to try to get it done in five minutes, which is going to be a trick. But we're going to have examples along the way, and I hope you stick around to look at it. Start by locating the direction of the light and see how it affects the scene. This will determine many things in your compositions. Second, look for compositions that fit two basic composition rules, the rule of thirds and the rule of leading lines. Both of these are pretty straightforward. Set your camera up to display the nine box grid overlay. This will help you place your subject into the left or right hand third of the frame. The rule of leading lines says that natural lines in the frame should lead you to the subject. Don't get bogged down with other rules until you get better with finding compositions. Keeping things simple will make finding compositions much easier. Simple designs involving these two rules will help you visualize compositions better. Third, think in terms of three layers, foreground, middle, and background. When you find a nice subject, make sure to figure out how the background fits with the other elements in the scene. There's nothing worse than a tree growing out of someone's head in a portrait. Also, check for intruding elements coming in from the sides. I call this edge patrol. Fourth, determine what you want in focus and out of focus. Use your aperture and subject distance to control this. Move around to arrange the elements in your image to be more pleasing. Shooting against the light is a great technique and can give you more dramatic images. Strong shadows, rim light, things like that. Also think of good shooting locations that will give you the best chance of providing great images. Practice looking for compositions all the time, anywhere you are. A good phone app for this is Viewfinder. It can show you frame lines for lenses for various camera makes and all sensor sizes. It also provides exposure and histogram information. One simple rule is to focus one third of the way into the image and use an f-stop that will give you the desired depth of field. Depending on several things, distance from the lens, wide angle or telephoto, distance to the subject and sensor size will determine what f-stop that is. If you are shooting an image that is far away, you can focus on the farthest object and use just about any f-stop because of the distance from the camera. If you are close to your subject, like inside two feet, you may have to focus stack to get everything in focus, including the background. For example, with a 15 millimeter lens on a full frame camera and a subject distance of 10 feet, everything from one foot, seven inches to infinity at f13 will be in focus. But conversely, with a 28 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, with the subject focused at 10 feet, four feet to infinity will be in focus. So you can see how depth the field changes with focal length. The focal length of the lens and the camera sensor have a lot to do with depth of field. An APS-C camera has more depth of field than a full frame camera, and a full frame camera has more depth of field than a medium format camera. So what may be in focus at F11 on an APS-C camera may not be in focus on a full frame or medium format camera. For most people, an APS-C or full frame camera are the norm. Using a phone app like Photopills, which has a depth of field calculator in it, will help you figuring your depth of field. Now that you have decided what is in focus and what is not by deciding what f-stop to use, you need to decide what shutter speed and ISO to use. If you are photographing landscapes, you will shoot at your lowest ISO for the camera you are using. At that point, you need to determine what shutter speed you need for the scene. To show movement in flowing water, your shutter speed should be around one quarter of a second or slower. If you want to stop or freeze the water, then use one five hundredth of a second or higher. Adjust your ISO to make your shutter speed work for the scene. If you are high shutter speed dependent, then you will need a higher ISO to get a higher shutter speed. Use your histogram to determine whether your highlights and shadows are under control. On my Fuji cameras, I always have my histogram visible on the screen so I can make sure my exposure is correct. Unless your scene is heavily dark or light, try to keep the histogram middle to slightly left as this will make your highlights not blown out. Exposing to the right to protect your shadows is less of an issue with today's sensors. If your histogram is touching either the left or the right hand side, you may have some clipped shadows or highlights. This is more crucial when shooting JPEG images because the image is baked into the file. Read, <laughs> less latitude. Unlike raw images, which are not. Remember, high ISO means high noise in the file. 
So try to keep your ISO as low as you can. Most important is your f-stop to determine depth of field. Second is your shutter speed to determine movement in the image. Third is ISO. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. It was an interesting experience trying to wrap all this up in five minutes because there is definitely a lot more uh, involved in figuring out these three things. But, you know, I wanted to give you a chance to see how you can work through these things and learn a little bit along the way uh, here on YouTube. So, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe and make some comment as to what you think about this video, and that would be great. So remember, it's not what you photograph, it's how you photograph it, and we'll catch you next time.